Oh, hey everyone. Now, you may want to sit down for this because I found an absolutely stupid mid-range optic. Today we'll be taking a look at the Zerotech Optics Trace Advanced 3-18 LR Hunter. And I think this optic that you've never heard of is going to really surprise you. All right, let's do it. So I think you all know that I've been on this kick lately to really find like that best mid-range optic that exists out on the market. As the mid-range gives you just spectacular eye relief, along with the ability to adjust parallax for accuracy at distance. And if you're putting a red dot in your LPVO, well, you're really just accepting that your LPVO sucks at 1x. I mean, hell, I put a red dot on my LPVOs too, and it's hilariously redundant. Maybe not on the primary arms PLXC, that 1x is just stupid, and I think that's about as good as an LPVO gets. That's me going off on a tangent. Let's see where we're currently at with all of our mid-range optic rankings that we've done so far. In first place is our primary arms GLX 2.5 to 10 Griffin. With its amazing eye box and insane weapon system of the Griffin reticle, it's just a complete powerhouse. Next, we have our Maven RS1 2.5 to 15 with its staggeringly low parallax and just a focus on doing everything right. And then we have our Crimson Trace and Arkenscope that we've also had a chance to take a look at. So that's where everything currently stands, but I bet you're like me and you've never ever heard of Zero Tech Optics before. So let's dig into who the heck they are before we look into the scope. Zero Tech Optics is an Australian based company. Hey, some of my favorite people are from Australia. And Zerotech aims to bring cutting edge design and performance that's accessible to everyone. From the backcountry hunter to the precision marksman, Zerotech aims to provide accuracy and clarity that exceeds the standards on the market. And yes, I asked them the most annoying question ever of if the toilet water spins the other way when you're in Australia. And yeah, weird, <laughs> they'd never heard that one before or the one about if they walk on their hands. But it's funny to me every time, even if they don't think that it is. So with today's scope, we're gonna do a full workup on it. And we're gonna start off like we normally do. And I'll show you first what comes in the box. Then we'll go over mounting up the optic and the different bits I used. And listen guys, I'm pretty sure YouTube thinks that making macaroni necklaces is gunsmithing at this point. So I'm gonna have to get a little bit creative in some of those details on how I mounted this thing all up. But then we'll go over the reticle in detail and move into our optics test of turret rotation and zero stop, illumination, magnification throw, eye relief, parallax, and glass clarity. And then we'll do some short range testing out here in the yard, and then we'll move out to the range to do the longer range testing stuff. Spoiler for everyone out there, it does ridiculously well. All right, though, I'm going to quit talking and let's hurry up and get into this optic. So first off, let me show you everything that comes with it. All right, so here's our box for our Trace Advanced. Looks pretty nice. Is there anything else written on here? Uh, no, just some basic stuff. On the side here, you can actually see what the reticle looks like if I can get to zoom in. Uh, three by 18 by 50 and all the details there. But let's pull this all out and, okay, this looks pretty nice. I like that cool little orange logo on there. Okay. All right, open this up. And here we have our optic in here. Scope looks good. All right, let's see what all's in this package. Once I get this thing out of here, of course. We'll just set this to the side. We'll go over all this in details in just a second though. All right, so the first thing we have what is this? Oh, okay, so this is a cover. So if you wanna cover the actual scope up, we've seen this included with a few scopes lately, which is nice to see. These are pretty cool. So yeah, that's pretty nice. All right, next we have this little Zero Tech pouch. I don't know what all this is. Let's kind of look into here and see what all comes in here. All right, so what is this? Okay, so this is the tool that's used to like take on and off the covers. You'll see this later, but basically you can do everything on the scope with this one tool. It's, it's pretty neat. We'll go through that when we see the instructions. Next we have our Allen wrenches and then some more of the little small screws that you use for the zero stop and things like that. So that's super useful. Just remember to keep that on you. And then here we have an another cleaning cloth. This is actually a fairly nice one. So um, I'll probably keep that one around. So we'll put that up there. And next we have our instructions, I think. Wait, what's this hidden here? Oh, okay. Here's a couple zero tech stickers. We can probably give these away to some viewers later. So those look pretty cool. And next we have the, nope, oh, what is this? Oh, okay, this is the dope card. So here you can actually record all your different distances at different elevations. You can print this off online too. 
Um, pretty nice that they include this. You can actually mark everything where you need it and where your impacts hit. But we'll just put this to the side for now. Okay, now we have the actual, right? Is that all we have? Yep, that's all we have. Now we have the instructions. Now, I don't really like going through all this, but I like that you can see it all. Um, here's the warranty. I mean, this may be a part where you just kind of skim through, but maybe come back to later. Here's all the different pieces of the different types of scopes. Again, this is something you're going to want to spend time with. Uh, setting the diopter. You better know how to set the diopter by now if you don't know how to do this. How to mount your scope. Another good one to have. I need to go over all that. Adjusting your parallax. Like, you really need to know how to do all this. How to zero. If you don't know how to zero, uh, yeah, read this. This will help you out. Um, here's to show us how the elevation and windage turret works, how it locks, how to set the zero stop. This is very important because you're going to need to adjust that later. How to zero, how to change all this stuff. Very important. And some of that stuff doesn't apply to us. Uh, yeah, some of this doesn't apply. Oh, how to remove the actual battery to change the actual illumination. There's a little tool we talked about, how you can use it to adjust the different elevation and windage, plus removing those aluminum caps. You just use this. So keep this in your range bag. It's going to be super useful. All right, then what else? Yep, we saw that, how to remove all the top pieces. Not even for the one we have. That's fine. And then all the different reticle options if you want to see these. I think the LR Hunter is one of the best ones, but they have some pretty cool ones too. I like the ones with the Christmas tree options that they have. Yeah, I need to try some of those. And then basic scope care and, yeah, warranty information. So that's all that's in here. All right, now looking at the actual scope itself, this thing looks really nice. I like the finish on here. I like on the front of this, it has that little trace and that orange. It just gives it a little bit of flair without being too much. The overall, it just, I don't know, I just like the look of it. Here we have those aluminum caps we talked about. They just, I don't know, they're really nice. I like them over the rubber. They just seem a little more stout. And here the diopter adjustment. You can see this knurled ring all the way around. This is, this is just super smooth and really, really nice. So um, high quality there. Can't complain about that. Looking at the magnification ring, uh, looks like it has a little knurled spot. The whole thing has those little grooves all the way around. Let's see kind of how the throw is. Mm, it's pretty buttery smooth and short. I think that's the most impressive thing. Going from 3 to 18, it's probably a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. It's just a quick 180 degree throw. Doesn't see, It seems like a lot, but for 3 to 18, that's kind of a lot of travel. Here we have our turret caps. Okay, you got to pull them up to unlock them. Let's kind of see how this goes. Oh, okay. All right, those are pretty clean. Uh, not a lot of wobble or anything. I like how they lock in place. It's kind of tall, though. I'm just curious how that's going to come into play when we put it all together. But yeah, these sound really good. It locks right down. Now, the windage is actually capped, so let's take this cover off, and let's see if it's kind of the same... Some really nice, clean clicks. They're kind of fine, so just be aware of that. But it is some small gradients for moving in 0.1 mil. Let's put that back on. And here we have... Well, look at the parallax first. You have this nice knurled ring around it. Oh, this feels really nice, though. The whole thing is nice and smooth, all the way down to 25 meters. And then up to infinity. But yeah, this, it's really nice. Feels like it's on ball bearings. It's really, really smooth. I'm not really finding anything bad on this scope at all. All right, next we have remove this cap, then put, uh, okay, let's remove cap then. We'll get this silly sticker off first. All right, there's our actual normal cap. Let's remove this. On the outer ring, you spin it. On the knurled outer ring portion, you can spin it to get the actual battery cap off. And here I see our battery. Ah, okay, there's a little plastic piece that's in there to make sure the illumination's not working. So just make sure you remove this before you actually do anything. And you just put your, just put, stay in there. Put the battery back on there, and you can put your cap back on. And once we did that, we have our scope all set up to go. So that's everything that comes with it. And next we're gonna look at, actually, I don't think we can even say those words anymore with, with whatever YouTube has going on. So next we're gonna look at making macaroni necklaces. Now, I already made the Zerotech into a macaroni necklace, and I do need a dedicated macaroni necklace making video, but here I use the Knight's Armament raviolis with the matching Knight's Armament lasagna noodle to hold our D-Ball D2 IR illuminator. Just make sure when you're putting your necklace together that you have the correct eye relief on your noodles before torquing down these little rotinis. Making macaroni necklaces is pretty easy, though, and if you need some tips, just make sure to reach out to me and I'll help you out. And you may have been able to glean that we're gonna be testing some IR illuminators soon in the future. 
and we definitely have some super cool night vision goodies that we got from EOTech. All that's for later. Now that we have this stupid macaroni necklace YouTube garbage behind us, let's go look at that reticle. Looking first, we see the Trace Advanced 3x18 is a first focal plane optic, as it should be when you have that big of a magnification range. Having that distance all the way from 3 to 18 and then it be second focal plane, I don't know, that, that would be really kind of silly. Being first focal plane means the reticle changes size with the optic, so let's first take a look at the 3x magnification. Here I see some things that immediately make me happy with the stadia lines at the 3, 6, 9, and 12 o'clock position. The center of the reticle is a very, very small dot in the center of the reticle when looking at 3x. And the little dot in the center is like tiny, like tiny, tiny. So like we've seen with the other mid-range optics, you're far more likely to use those stadia lines for reference when you're at those lower magnification ranges. And with the stadia lines, when you're engaging multiple closer range targets, you're still able to quickly identify the center of the reticle and transition from target to target without losing the center reticle position. As we always do though, we'll test out that whole part and see how it actually works when we do the close range testing stuff later. But as we move the ZeroTech up to the full 18x magnification, we see the reticle transform into a full mill grid. Here, your center view explodes into a full sighting system with half and full mill increments on the left and right side, along with vertically up the center position. These indicators give you the ability to easily correct impact, direct target position, or measure targets at range. Uh, I have what looks like to be a polar bear with a rifle. He's two mil above that hill up ahead. Along the bottom of the reticle is also a mill grid Christmas tree with half and one mil increments all the way down. This means you can use this reticle for any caliber and any barrel length. You just need to know what your dope is to engage at each different distance. And then you can just line up and engage when you know how far the target is away. As this reticle is focused on the hunter and quick engagements inside of 600 yards, the reticle is just simple and uncluttered. Balancing a clear view with just enough information to make quick impact correction and then be able to re-engage. And for a hunting or mid-range optic, this reticle is just great because sometimes I don't need to have like all the information like how to adjust for the curvature of the earth like within the reticle if I really just need just you know, tactical accuracy. And it really seems like the whole reticle and magnification range just synergizes so well in our long range optics testing platform. And particularly if you're out hunting, you have a lot more view of the area without as much reticle data cluttering your view. And I will say I'm kind of surprised because it feels like it has everything I need without everything that I don't. Now, I do wish it had the horizontal ranging built into the two, three, and four mil markers, as I think that would be easy to implement. And without any vertical or horizontal ranging, it makes it pretty hard to beat the weapon system, that's the primary arms Griffin reticle. I do love that Griffin, I think I have like four of them now. One last cool bit is that you can also download a dope card for this LR Hunter on the ZeroTech website, if you wanted to have a printout of your hit locations at various distances and elevations. So I think you have most of the basics of this scope, so let's go ahead and go into some of the scope tests, and the first one we're gonna do is the actual turret rotation and zero stop. Now, the Zero Tech does some unique things here. The side and top turrets are actually different. Let's look at the elevation first. Here we see a locking turret that is actually locked in place when it is pushed down. You pull up on the turret to free it, and then you can make turret adjustments. Now, I'll warn you, this style of turret cap means it will occlude a red dot if you put it in that 12 o'clock position. I actually had this scope originally on a reptilia mount and an Aimpoint T2 on the top 12 o'clock position, but the T2 was impossible to see over these top turrets. And ignore the silly setup that I have on it right now, but if I want to do a red dot setup on here for my 1X, I would have to do some sort of offset mount because I couldn't use that 12 o'clock position. And I would probably use my LaRue or the Valhalla Tactical Rook mount if I wanted to do that. And I'll sort all that out once I'm done playing with all these IR illuminators. Looking at the elevation turrets themselves, I found they were extremely tactile and the clicks were nice and loud. The movement travels in 0.1 mil increments. 
I did find the small spacing between the different clicks means I would sometimes overshoot if I was trying to make fine adjustments quickly, but with the loud clicks, it never became an issue and it was incredibly easy to zero. The zero tech also includes a zero stop where you remove the top cap and then you can adjust the zero stop position underneath. And now this is great and they give you all the tools you would need to adjust the top turret and the zero stop, but I want you to be aware that the zero stop comes engaged from the factory and I learned that when I went to go zero at the range and I couldn't get the actual scope to go down low enough. Thankfully, I had some tools with me, but not like the included zero tech optics tools. I probably should have brought those. So at the range then, I just loosened the top cap and then I loosened the zero stop and then put the top cap back together. So then I could just leave it alone until I had my zero set. And then once I was all zeroed and lined up, I just went back and torqued it all down. Just be aware that it's gonna come set and it may jam you up at the range. So bring tools or loosen it before you go. Now, I did mention the turrets are interesting because they're different. Unlike the elevation, the windage actually uses a capped turret design. When you remove the turret cap, you expose the windage turret adjustment underneath. The windage has the same excellent tactile and audible click, but the spacing is again a bit small, so just take your time. The side windage knob does not have a zero stop, but like the top turret, you can set your zero, then unscrew the side locking screw, so then you can remove the entire cap and then realign it with your zero position on the zero marker. And this is smart because you don't normally adjust your windage for like every windy day. I just set my windage like when I zero it and then I never really mess with it again. And I think I actually aligned like the zero cap because I was showing it for this video, but normally I would just set it for my zero and then <laughs> probably never even look at it again. As I'd probably just use the mill markers on the actual reticle itself to adjust for different wind holds. Since those wind holds can vary day to day or even shot to shot. All right, though, let's move into our next test, and this one's actually pretty cool, too, and this is our illumination. The illumination on the Trace Advance 3 to 18 doesn't use the normal rotary knob, but instead uses a push-button design. You hold down the button for a few seconds, and the reticle illumination turns on. Then a short tap causes the illumination to cycle through the different illumination modes. It has five positions that range from almost a night vision setting all the way up to extremely bright. Now extremely bright in like scope illumination terms doesn't usually mean like daylight bright. And that also means the battery lasts a lot more than a half hour if it was. But the illumination on the reticle was some of the best I've seen as it doesn't just illuminate a single center position, but instead highlights the entire mill cross. This makes it extremely easy to locate your reticle in low light and you still have your mill grid markings to make shots out to range. Now, in terms of illumination design, it's probably one of my favorites. Now, I do wish it had like a control knob on the side to make the adjustment of the illumination a little bit simpler. All right, though, let's move on to our next test, and we're gonna look at the actual magnification throw. Looking at the magnification ring itself, it has these large raised notches all around the ring to make it extremely easy to get a purchase on the magnification ring. There is also a raised nub that you can hook your thumb or finger onto to make it faster to adjust. The top of this nubbin also has a slot to add in the throw lever that you can pick up off the website. And I wanna say a big thanks here because this throw lever is like $18 and not like the 65 bucks or more that most of these other companies charge. And putting on the throw lever is just stupid simple. You slide it over the nubbin and lock it down. The look with the throw lever keeps that same zero tech flow over the entire optic. I found myself really preferring the throw lever and having it such a cheap upgrade is just amazing. The magnification ring itself just oozes with quality and the whole rotation is buttery smooth. Looking at the throw distance itself, we see it's about 180 degrees to go from three all the way over to 18. This makes it a fairly short throw to go from short to long range and really personifies this mid-range optic space. It really is just silly fast to go from like a 50 yard engagement all the way out past a thousand if you needed to. I definitely haven't had any complaints about using the magnification, but we gotta keep going. And the next category is eye relief. And as with most mid-range optics, it just absolutely nails this. 
and some internet troll may whine that we're actually talking exit people in this test, but whatever. Here you can see the 3X has some completely stupid eye relief to make it incredibly forgiving to the end user. I'm hoping this eye box is translating on camera to just show you how easy it is to get up and get on target when your eye box is this big. Moving the magnification all the way up to 18X, the eye relief stays incredibly impressive and actually gives us some of the best eye relief of any of the scopes we've seen, while also offering the most magnification of any of the scopes we've seen so far in these tests. And it's really hard to capture on camera, but when you put this scope up to your eye, it's just, the scope image is just there. It, it really is a wow moment that you kind of have to have the scope to just see. But we gotta keep moving through these tests, and the next one is gonna be the parallax adjustment. Here we see that the parallax is incorporated on the side and actually runs inward of the illumination button and battery compartment. The parallax has a knurled ring that goes all the way around the parallax adjustment to give you a nice purchase to make fine or gross adjustments. The rotation itself is just stupidly smooth. It gives you enough resistance to stay in place while then feel like it's on ball bearings when you move it through the adjustment. The parallax goes all the way up to infinity and then has about a 180 degree throw to go all the way to the bottom at 25 yards, making it extremely fast to make quick parallax adjustments. And 25 doesn't go quite as low as we saw with the Maven RS1 with like the 10 yard parallax, but that really short throw just really maximizes its ability to go from the short to long range parallax adjustments. Now though, I definitely saved the best for last. And I really hope I'm able to capture this properly for you, but good God, the glass clarity test. Now with my eyes, most of the optics all look fairly good and I often can't tell much of a difference. That is not the case with the Trace Advance 3 to 18. The glass quality is just incredible and combined with the insane eye relief, you have a stupid, stupid setup. For example, I've seen this sign out at about 560 yards but had no idea what it said. Then when I use this optic, I can read it. It says private property. And I want you to think about that. It has the fidelity to be able to read what like a 10 by 12 sign at 560 yards. It's just nuts. Looking out at our usual house at 930 yards, I can almost count the number of individual shingles missing. The ability to have this level of detail at this distance is just something I've never seen before. I even looked out to the silos that are about 1800 yards out and I was just blown away that I could read the text off the silo clear as day. And when it comes to glass, there's just most other scopes and then there's this guy, good grief. And I think it should be noted that I think this is the first time that I've ever really drooled over glass quality over any of the scope tests. But let's see how all these bits translate into the real world. And let's start out by doing some close range testing and then we'll do what we normally do and go out to the range and test it out. Testing these targets in my yard, the outer stadia lines do a great job of keeping my focus on the target. I lose out on some like absolute accuracy as the middle dot is a bit hard to see but in terms of tactical, like real world accuracy, I would be able to engage the target at this closer distance without any issues. Turning on the illumination only further aids in adding additional reference to the center reticle position. The illumination seems to add some additional accuracy as I can track center better, but I didn't find it to be wildly different than having illumination off. The minimum 3X magnification really means you do need like an offset red dot solution like we mentioned, as it really doesn't do well close range, like not as well as like the two and 2.5 did that we saw on some other scopes. But for the 18X and the stupid glass quality, I'll just run an offset and be <laughs> extremely happy. Okay, so let's go do the fun stuff now and actually go out to the range. So just so you're aware what ammunition we're gonna use, we're gonna use the 77 grain S and B that we've been using for all of our optics testing. And I'll put a link to that video up here and down in the description if you wanna know more about that ammo and the whole long range testing setup that we're gonna use. I did a basic bore sight and the first shot was barely off. So I used the reticle to measure my adjustments and made a second shot while aiming slightly to the right apparently.
I made one click and adjustment and dialed in my last shot and <laughs> shot the exact same hole again. Whatever, I did a couple more clicks and then moved over to the 100 yard range. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Let's do like uh, three shots. Well, we'll wait for the guy next to me apparently first. And yeah, no surprise to anyone here. That's super easy. So let's do another three shot pattern at like 300 yards. Oh, I did use the Strelok Pro app and I'll overlay that to show my shooting location on the reticle for 300 yards. Super fun and super easy. Let's do uh, four shots, 100, 300, and just, I don't know, bounce back and forth. <laughs> I don't know, let's try something. It's all pretty easy. Uh, okay, before we move to the super long range, let's just see if we can do some rapid hits at 300 then. Yep, it's fun, easy to control, and super easy to see the target. All right, let's move out to the 430 yard. Now here I wasn't paying attention to where the Strelok was telling me to hit. I was aiming low on the target, and it wasn't until I saw the impact directly below the target did I realize my error. I loaded back up and then placed the reticle marker in the center of the target and let it rip. I really need to start paying more attention to the ballistic app. All right, though, let's move out to 600. I think it's actually like 590, but whatever. Here I made sure to actually pay attention to my impact location on the app to get everything lined up. Then I moved over to the other target at 600 just to see if maybe I could see the impacts a little bit better. Overall, it was just a great shooting day overall, and I did actually test some other 77 grain ammo with the AAC ammo, and having such clarity of glass, it was really easy to see the different trajectories and then make the adjustment for the different ammo. But let's stay focused on our scope. I'll show you the other ammo later. Let's do our pros and cons, and the first pro I wanna talk about is that glass and that parallax. The glass quality is just truly second to none on this optic. Being able to see your target this clearly is just something I've never seen before. Combined with the finely tuned parallax adjustment knob, you can adjust everything easily to get a tier of image fidelity you've probably never seen. I had quite a few of those moments where I'm like, wait a minute, look how good that looks. And I see a lot of scopes. Okay, so the next pro I wanna talk about is that magnification throw and the stupidly good eye relief. We see this incredibly short magnification throw combined with a throw lever option that isn't made by Navy SEALs trying to rip you off as hard as possible. And then that whole system is paired with one of the best eye boxes I've ever seen. From three to 18, the user can just get a clear image so incredibly quickly to allow for those accurate shots at speed. And it really just defines what I'm looking for in a mid-range scope. All right, though, the last pro I wanna talk about is actually gonna be the reticle and the illumination. While I think the missing horizontal and vertical ranging is a pretty big negative, the simplistic reticle just shines in this mid-range optic tier. You have a clear view without too many reticle bits all over the place. The illumination is also smart and gives added functionality to the user instead of just illuminating one little spot in the center. The whole thing is just functional and usable, and this little scope just kept surprising me. All right, though, let's talk about cons, and they're almost all in the controls, and the first one's gonna be that actual illumination control. Now, I get why this is nice, so I don't accidentally bump the illumination, but it's also extremely hard to actually turn on. You have to be looking through the optic to see if it's on, but then somehow still reach for the button. It's challenging for sure, and the difficulties turning on the illumination is probably why I never even bothered to turn it on outside of this review. All right, though, the next con is actually gonna be that top elevation turret. Again, I know folks wanna be able to make those micro adjustments on the turret, but this causes the turret to stick up so high you can't use a top red dot. 
This doesn't impact me as much as we're testing illuminators up there, but it did cause an initial problem. The turret rotation spacing itself is too fine to lend itself into the role of fast turret adjustment very well anyway. And I think the elevation turret would have been better suited to be capped the same way as the windage is. But I do realize some people will say the exact opposite, and I do realize that your use case could vary from mine. Realistically, I love this scope, and I needed something to complain about. So let's see where the Zero Tech 3 to 18 ended up on our list. And I'm not going to lie to you, this was incredibly, incredibly hard. The Zero Tech has some stupid, stupid glass and eye relief, but the Primary Arms 2.5 to 10 Griffin just has a reticle that's its own weapon system. I tossed over this one back and forth, but in the end, I actually gave the crown to the Zero Tech 3 to 18 with the added magnification, glass quality, and eye relief. So we do have a new king of our ranking, but I do want to say that you're really just splitting hairs in all of those top three scopes on if you want to have the best glass, the best reticle, or kind of the best close range. And you'd be really making a great choice with any of those top three. And it's amazing how tricky it is to even rank them with all the different tests that we're doing. I do want you to stay tuned though as we throw on some goodies on the ZeroTech Optic from EOTech with the clip-on NVLR and then move into some IR Illuminator nighttime testing. The nighttime testing stuff is pretty wild, I'll tell you that. But I do hope this video on the ZeroTech Trace Advanced 3 to 18 with the LR Hunter reticle was useful in your purchasing decision. I want to say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters and all of our YouTube members that make this entire channel possible. And I want to say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what's kind of the main feature you're looking for in your mid-range optics. All right, everyone, ball shout. Can you hear all those airplanes? It's like every minute or two, there's another one. Love it. Now you'll never guess what that is. It's the airplane. It's very wet, muddy, and gross over here. <laughs> All right, later.